An old man traveling a lone highway came at evening cold and gray to a chasm that was vast, deep, and wide. He crossed the chasm in the twilight dim. The chasm held no fears for him, but he paused when he reached the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man said a fellow traveler near, why waste your time in building here? Your journey will end with the close of day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at even time? The builder lifted his old gray head. My friend, in the path I've come, there followeth after me today an eager youth who must pass this way. The chasm that held no fears for me, to the eager youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. My friend, I build this bridge for him. The Bridge Builder, the inspirational doctrine that one distinguished Arizona educator lives by. My name is Morrison F. Warren. I was born in Marlin, Texas. I've lived in Arizona for 71 years. I was raised in the neighborhood of 12th Street in Adams, which uh, was just a few blocks from downtown. And uh, Van Buren actually was, was north. <laughs> and in that neighborhood were Chinese grocers, white grocers, black uh, and Hispanics. And uh, it struck me very early that I had very good friends among all those ethnic groups, but we didn't attend the same schools. We would, we would meet Friday afternoon, play all day Saturday, play after church on Sunday, and then we went to different schools. I never understood that. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I laughed to keep from crying about it, but I never understood it. After being honored as valedictorian of his high school graduating class, Morrison went on to Phoenix College. My high school class only had 17 students. 17 students. So I really didn't know how good I was as a student. I wanted to go to college very badly. And, but I didn't know, and, and this is one of the reasons that I'm an integrationist. I think it's only in the open, competitive marketplace that people really know and find and can evaluate their effectiveness. I went to Phoenix College as a 17-year-old student. And my freshman year, I took algebra classes, I took Spanish, and I took uh, biology courses, zoology, the real tough courses, got straight A's. At the height of World War II, Morrison volunteered to serve in the Air Force. A profound episode during this period set Morrison forth on what would become his life's work. An officer and I uh, went to visit Buchenwald concentration camp in Weimar. You, you just could not fathom that this was a possibility and how, how could this happen, man's inhumanity uh, to man. So I was very, very sensitive to that and it had an enormous impact upon me. And uh, in view of the fact that I was in the danger zone and you, there's a 50-50 chance or less that one will not make it home. But I did make some promises to, to God that if I came home, I was going to spend the rest of my life building bridges between people. And I was going to spend an enormous amount of my energy with young children before they develop hate. One has to learn to hate. Thankfully, Morrison made it back to Arizona. Determined to pursue his calling, he enrolled at Arizona State College in Tempe to procure a degree in elementary education. While playing for the ASC football squad, Morrison encountered yet another episode of intolerance that would shape his life. We were scheduled to play the University of Texas in El Paso. El Paso. The day before the game, the administration at ASU was informed that they should not bring the two black athletes because uh, the local police and the, the school would not, could not be responsible 
for control of persons in the stands. The Arizona State College said that they would never play a team unless all of their players can play and be treated like gentlemen and so forth. Morrison began his teaching career at Dunbar Elementary, where he soon took on the role of halftime principal. During this period, he received his master's degree in school community relations. Shortly after, Morrison accepted the principal appointment at Booker T. Washington Elementary, where he promptly began initiating innovative educational programs for the students and the community. And the first one of that was the fact that I think uh, that parents play a very significant role in the, in the life, in the educational life, as well as in the life of children. And they model for children. So time spent with parents may be more important than time spent with children, particularly if the school is trying to institutionalize some behaviors that need to be reinforced at home, then it means the persons at home then have to take on the role of teachers. And so I uh, and formed an organization called Foundations of Understanding and worked with parents to help them to understand to know and to understand, because I think commitment grows from knowledge and understanding. In 1959, Morrison completed his doctorate in educational administration and supervision. Dr. Warren also championed many community causes, serving administrative roles in organizations such as Head Start and the Arizona Advisory Committee to the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. In 1966, Dr. Warren became a member of the Phoenix City Council and was appointed vice mayor in 1969, an era for prominent accomplishments of the council. People who travel about cities in this country are fascinated how easy it is to get around in our city and how clean we are. We develop a master plan. Oh, one other thing we developed was a sensitivity to the poor. We develop, uh, we call it LEAP, Le Leadership and Education for the Advancement of Phoenix at that time, but uh, the sensitivity to, uh, to humans in the city. I think that, that's, that's our greatest contribution. In 1968, Dr. Warren returned to ASU, accepting a faculty position in the School of Education. Using his decade-long experience as a hands-on instructor and administrator, Professor Warren established a prestigious reputation for his publications and lectures on cultural-related education topics. He served as director of the I.D. Payne Laboratory School, a research arm of the ASU School of Education, which dedicated itself to exploring and implementing effective multicultural public education. Dr. Warren's leadership experience led to him being sought out by several Arizona corporations and organizations to serve on their board of directors. And in 1981, he became president of the Fiesta Bowl board, becoming instrumental in securing the game as an all-important New Year's Day matchup. Just four years later, the Fiesta Bowl hosted the first of its storied history of national championship games. But for all of Dr. Warren's triumphs, the accomplishment he will most be praised for is the one he set out to fulfill on that infamous day while serving his country in World War II. And I like to think that uh, my work in the community has been one of building bridges between people, young and old, in and out, black and white, male, female, moneyed, non-moneyed, housed, non-housed, educated, uneducated. And um, it has been a beacon of my life. It's something I decided upon a long time ago. And I think my life will validate it. I would whisper love so loudly Every heart could understand That love and only love Can join the tribes of man I would give my heart's desire so that you might see The first step is to realize That it all begins with you and me
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand in tribute to Arizona history maker honoree, Dr. Morrison Warren. <laughs> 